Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode, episode 88 of The Struggling Hunters. You got Eric over there in Colorado. And then over here in Utah, you got Joe, the big show. <laughs> um, thanks for tuning in and giving us a listen. Uh, for those of you that, uh, that are tuning in for the first time to our podcast, uh, we do one once a week. We turn something out. We, uh, we've been, uh, like the name says, we're the struggling hunters. Uh, we're trying to improve upon that, but you know, that's, I think, I think no matter how good we are, we're still going to be struggling somewhere in the hunting world. So this is just our journey on, uh, becoming better hunters and, um, having fun with it as we go through it. So thanks for listening. And, uh, this episode we're going to be going. So if you haven't been listening to our previous episodes, we've been talking, discussing an article that's, uh, 10, 10 tips for hunting elk. And, um, we're, we're on tip number three this week. And, uh, so we'll be going over that. And then, um, uh, I think I got a new toy that we're going to be discussing a little bit. And then, uh, I have some, uh, we're talking some other learning experiences that, uh, happened this year that we kind of want to discuss a little bit, um, for hunting elk and, see what we think on that so but with that so that's pretty much going to be the uh the episode today um then again thanks for tuning in and we'll get started started into it now that i've uh now that the big show has been taking over the show and not letting eric talk that much again <laughs> uh we'll let eric kind of i guess be, share a little bit of the show <laughs> perfect thanks big show Anytime, uh, kid, anytime. <laughs> all right well i'll kick it off with this so the last few weeks we've been doing uh the 10 tips for bow hunting elk uh it's a american hunter article that was put out um well back in 2018 i guess so uh a couple weeks ago we covered getting in shape last week we we covered practice and this week we're going to talk a little bit about being bivy ready or bivy. slash spike camp ready um i don't have much experience in spike camp uh most of the time i mean i'm i'm just hiking back to my base camp so i'm a little it's one of those things where i don't i wouldn't mind doing it but we we you know i'm i'm usually doing you know, going so far in and what, you know, if once it starts getting dark out or getting close to dark, I'm like, ah, better, better start hiking back to camp. And I mean, that's just kind of the way, the way I roll. So um, with that said, I, I, in the future, I wouldn't mind doing more bivy camps and uh, maybe preparing to be bivy ready. And which me and Joe were talking, I mean, in a sense, I do have in my uh, first aid kit or my first aid stuff, I do have some, uh, some emergency blankets and stuff. So like, if I had to, I could probably stay out there if I really, if something came up or, or if I'm like, Oh, I'm right in the middle of some elk and I don't want to leave this area. You know, it was already a 10 mile hike in or something. I don't want right. to leave it. I mean, I could probably figure out a way to set up using that kind of stuff especially during the archery hunt uh where it's a little warmer and stuff and you probably get away with a little little less stuff but but i definitely i guess this is where i kind of lack on the or today's uh being bivy ready the number three it's where i kind of lack in all these tips because i i really i'm really not bivy ready uh but in the future though, it's definitely something that I'll want to keep in mind and try to get to where I am. Right. But I also, it, it, the way we hunt and the way we use base camp, like I never, I've never really thought like, Oh, I better put my sleeping bag in a, in my tent, in my, right. in my pack. I'm usually thinking of everything else, but I guess, I guess I could, 
just usually I just always have a plan to get back to camp. Right. Yeah. No. And I guess too, like, you know, the article discussed about like how, if you get it, like you said it too, if you get into the elk, you're miles from, from camp, you don't want to hike out back in and out. Like I get that. Like that makes sense. And I get that. I'm not wanting to, uh, like you said, you're miles in there. And then just uh, like, sometimes like, you know, you're, you're hiking in, you're four miles deep and you're covered some rugged country. And you're like, I got to go back out, go to bed and then try to get up early enough to cover the ground to get back to where I'm at now. Like, you know, that's only, I'm only going to get two hours of sleep. <laughs> <You know? laughs> so like, yeah, like being bivy revy, that's kind of a, you know, in a way an interesting thing. And I, I'll throw in there too. It was one of my reserves in doing it. I guess you can call me a sissy. I'll, you know, I'll admit big shows, a sissy, <laughs> but you know, even safety, I guess is more like what it boils down to, but kind of staying in that cell phone range at some point in my day, especially at night to be able to call home and talk to the wife and make sure everything's okay. Which this kind of goes away from the article and everything, but speaking of that, I know me and Joe both lack in this area. So, um, we, we, we kind of hunt out or we do hunt out of service and a lot of the time. Right. Um, uh, and with that said, one thing that we probably need to get in the future is some, uh, satellite phones or whatever they have nowadays. Uh, um, right. Not that we want to sit there and have long old conversations in the middle of woods with it, but, but for safety feature, we probably should get better about it, but. Um, one of my biggest safety features is, and I think Joe kind of has one that's similar is basically if I don't call my wife that night, that she might want to start getting a little bit worried, maybe give it a little bit of time if I got right. something, but, right. but, uh, but if I don't get to her by the next day at some point, then maybe, uh, and I, I drop her all my waypoints and, or you know, where I think I'll be and stuff. And so we, we do have some safety protocols uh, with, or I do with my, cause I don't have a satellite phone. Right. Um, I have some safety protocols with my wife that way. If um, basically, if I just don't come home, she can come find me or well, well, right. not her, but somebody kind of, you know, like, yeah, stay with that turn of, you know, I guess that all comes back to being that bivy ready, but, you know, like where we kind of do hunt by ourselves the majority of the time we do get together for a couple of days during the season, our seasons, but the majority of the time we're, we're all by ourselves. And uh, so we, we tried to put in some personal protocols to, to be safe because, you know, we want to uh, just like you guys listening, you know, you want to be doing this for a long time and uh, we don't want to, <laughs> you know, cut anything, any time short or yeah. maybe I guess become too crippled to where you can't do it anymore. Yeah. You know, um, I hunted with a guy one year and, uh, he said, it, it's one of those things that I was like, I was like, man, I don't know if I agree with it, but like, I, I kind of get it, but he, he, uh, he was reminiscing about his old man. And, uh, you know, his old man passed away or whatever, but he's like, yeah, you know, in the evenings, me and my old man, we, uh, we never hunted too hard. We just kind of did like a nice little, nice little, uh, road hunt kind of thing. And, um, just took it real easy. Cause you know, it's getting late and, you know, just the whole, you know, you don't want to be hiking in the middle of the woods and, and, uh, get something and deal with it in the middle of the night and that whole shabacle and did i just make up the word shabacle i feel like i did um yeah i'll give it to you you know you're you're that you're intelligent like that to <laughs> come up with a new word that that um what i i don't even know that i fully understand what it means but yeah i don't even know what it means either but um i'll come up with the definition later point to the story though is whenever he first told me that 
I was like, ah, man, come on. You know, you're missing your opportunities. And so, seriously, you know, I was like, ah, you're missing your opportunities. But it's definitely something that's always stuck with me and kind of going back um, to like the safety protocols and trying to, uh, I, I have a whole routine now where, um, you know, I mean, I'll walk out of the woods at dark, but, I, but I'm, you know, I'm like, ah, I'm, it's going to get dark in two hours, you know, and, um, or maybe even three sometimes or whatever, depending on how far out I am. And I'll start walking back to toward camp. And if I walk out of the woods in the dark, that's one thing. But uh, as it starts getting later like that, uh, one thing I like to do is, especially whenever we have no service. Now, if I have service throughout, I, I do play it a little bit differently. I, I do got to throw that out there. But, um, but with no service and with the technology that we have in today's world and stuff, I, uh, I, what I like to do is start walking out, try to get back to base camp around dark, maybe a little after dark. Um, I'll jump in my truck and go, go where the service is. And then during that time, I kind of give, give myself an opportunity to charge my phone, uh, charge my, my battery banks if I need to, while I'm, you know, talking on the phone and explaining my day away and what I saw or whatever to my wife or to Joe. Sometimes I'll give him a call and be like, Hey, what do you think? Or whatever. But, but anyways, it's kind of my routine that I've picked up over the years is, is in the evening, I, you know, I'll hunt all day. Um, I'll hunt as long as I can and everything, but that period, I, I, that's kind of what I do to, to, uh, kind of reset everything. I will say one thing, um, we we're kind of talking about it with the bivy camp and, and getting back to camp and, and the safety and with the safety protocols, uh, or, you know, you were talking, um, about like only having a couple of hours of sleep and stuff, especially during the archery hunt. I like, I like, uh, man, I, I almost, it's almost like, uh, for me after a full day of hunting like that, I'm like, I'm ready to go to bed. I am so ready to go to bed and fall, you know, try to get as much rest as I can. Cause, cause, uh, you know, I feel like I hit it pretty hard and, and I, I try to go hard all day and, and get where I need to get. And, uh, that way the biggest thing is, is cause I don't want to, I want to, I want to be able to tell myself I couldn't have done anything hard. I couldn't have done it harder. I couldn't have, you know, pursued anything harder. So I really, I really try to hunt hard. And, and I feel like my hunts have gotten, I pushed myself harder and harder every year. And anyways, the point is though, is, is yeah. So sometimes like I think about that and I'm like, I'm like, man, I could almost go without even getting dinner and just go straight to bed just to get, just to recover a little bit and try to get as much sleep as I can. Um, well, speaking of that, so we didn't, we didn't, we didn't end up trying it. And I kind of want to bring it up. Um, there was one plan that we were gonna, we we're gonna like, I don't know if neither one of us tried it, but we had one plan of trying to uh, go, drive down the road or whatever whenever it got dark and throw out a few bugles and see if we could we could uh you know kind of get an idea where the elk were uh but during the archery hunt well i guess that's usually whenever the, they're bugling anyway <laughs> but by the time i was done with the day though like i was so tired i'm like man i'm just gonna go to sleep like i don't i don't want to be driving around all night you know like i need to recover i need to get back there in the woods and you know um, it probably would have benefited me if I would have done that, but like, I don't know, it was, I, I really wanted to try it, but every night, I mean, you know, it get nine o'clock and then I'm like, I'm re I'm just ready for bed, man. I, yeah. I don't want to do that. So, right. Uh, yeah, but I definitely think it's, it'd be a nice little trick to do, you know, just to kind of, kind of pinpoint what, what mountain range they're on or, Right where they're at and kind of help mm -hmm. discover them. Yeah, correct. Yeah. Yeah, we were going to try it and see if it worked and see see what – and it didn't really happen. I, I don't know. Um, we ended up not really ever talking about it again, but it just kind of came to my mind tonight because I know a few nights there whenever I was hunting, I was 
I debated that question. I'm like, do I go drive around and do that? You know, it'd be nine 30, 10 o'clock or whatever. And I'm like, do I go do that? Or do I just get some sleep? And I all, I elected to get some sleep. I was tired most of those nights, but anyway, yeah. So you have anything else on the bivvies? No, I think that's, Bivy camps. you know, it's kind of interesting. I'll just say that we went from being bivy ready and I guess that's just one of the, we took it to, to playing it safe. That's probably why we haven't really probably pushed it, but you know, that's, we want years of this to come and, and, you know, that's one of the things that, that we feel is important. So, you know, yeah. end of day, be safe. Yeah. 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 A hundred percent. And I know me and Joe, we talk about it all the time doing, doing more spike camps in the future and, and we'll probably get there for sure. But I mean, we're just so set up for, well, there's two things is, is in my opinion is most of the places we go, we're right there where the elk are, you know, in, in one way or, or another. And, um, especially this last year, we were really getting into them a lot more than we have in the past. But, um, so the areas we hunt, it's almost pointless. Every, like for me, the area that I hunt, everything's surrounded by a big circles of road. I mean, one way or another, I'd hit a road. So it'd be kind of pointless to do a bivy camp because there's a road close by or, so, you know, not everywhere necessarily, but I mean, kind of anyway. Um, yeah, for me, I just, I don't know. I just, I'm all set. I'm set up for a base camp. And so I'm not really a bivy camp or spike camp ready for my personal self. So that's about yeah. all I got on it. That's all I got too. So I guess I can take us on to uh, the next part was uh, Joe's new toy. I guess you want to call it. And... Yeah. The exciting stuff. <laughs> um, so it came a little quicker than I thought it would. Meaning that I was kind of, um, <laughs> I bought a new bow. <laughs> um and i'll just get it out there right now keep you guys from um guessing what what it might be and uh but yeah i, I got a new bow it's a uh, uh, elite tempo um you know it's a little bit i guess it's a four-year-old round of four-year-old bow but it seems to be in pretty good pretty good condition came with rest uh you know a whisker biscuit um a stabilizer uh uh, uh elk was a trophy tro uh, uh pff, a, a site i can't i'm not can't even think. trophy it was a trophy ridge yeah trophy ridge site four pin site um so you know and, and it looks like it's in fairly i just got it today uh i've been playing with it a little bit so um hope in the next little bit hopefully be able to do some episodes not put them on on the on the channel of shooting the bow and kind of give a little review on it but uh i'll kind of i guess dive into that for a little bit kind of kind of my do's and don'ts or what what my what my white my white twos or <laughs> why i dids <laughs> um on on why you chose that bow and everything yeah correct gotcha gotcha so well let me ask you joe why'd you choose that bow <laughs> uh because it was for sale <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's a good one. so whenever we talked about this on the podcast you were like oh i'm gonna go shoot every bow i can and yeah blah, blah, blah. <laughs> i was <laughs> which that's always what happens though right like like you're like oh i'm i'm really gonna be patient and then the first car that you see like if you go going car shopping first car you see you're like yeah i ended up buying it <laughs> <laughs> i really didn't want to be that guy but i ended up being that guy <laughs> exactly exactly because you know like one of the things is i really uh i you know i've, I've shot bows you know evidently for the last three four years but i haven't really shot that many new bows i've only been into one archery shop there are cabela's and shot a bow previously and besides uh, your bow, like, you know, I haven't shot anything too new and getting into archery hunting. I didn't want to drop a bunch of money and then be like, ah, 
I'm not really not into it. And then, you know, like then I just bought a brand new bow and it's sitting in the closet. So uh, I've been using the older uh, archery equipment. And I go by I mean older, I'm talking roughly probably I have I got two other bows and my dad bought me the one. It was too big for me at the time. He bought it for me when I was 12. That was back or 11. I, I was 11, 10 or 11. Cause I was 12 when we moved to turn 12 when we moved to Idaho and I already had the bow. So it was too big for me then. And I grew into it. And, uh, so, you know, I was back in 94, 93, 94, 95, somewhere in there. So it has some age on it. <laughs> yeah. And I then smokes. And then the other bow is another, it's an, it's, that one was a bear. This, the, my other older bow is a Hoyt and I picked it up from a coworker um it's old i it's probably again 20 years old maybe somewhere in that realm and my goal i had a goal of i guess it's no longer a goal but i was telling myself i didn't want to purchase a new bow until i harvested something with an old bow you know just one of those i started out with this i'm going to finish it but uh just kind of happened that saving some pennies and some extra money came down the pipe and uh black friday hit and <clears throat> cabela's had <laughs> had some deals on a bow and i was like oh i could swing that bow and then i was like oh well why would i want that bow and not another bow then i started you know like going down that rabbit hole yeah and and i was i guess I, and i was really wanting to um understand bows a little bit better and by meaning like, you know, whatever, what everybody else thought out there, I didn't just want to go buy a bow. And, uh, so in doing so I, I had started making a checklist. Um, did you check it twice? I did actually, I checked it three times. Oh, good. <laughs> good deal. Um, and so it started, you know, I wanting to, it was, it was kind of interesting learning and coming to understand understanding what i was wanting to look for but one of the things that became on my list was uh was wanting like a at least a 30 inch axle to axle um and i was wanting a, at least a seven inch rise height i wasn't going to go under that um so and then you know i was wanting to go somewhere probably in 70 pound range is uh of what for the draw draw weight so I, I uh, you know, I was, I was cruising everything I had at the time I looked at my phone and I had like 80 tabs open for different bows that I had pulled up from sportsman's warehouse, from Cabela's, from uh, uh, Shields, all the used bows I'd come across, I'd open a new tab for them. So, you know, I was really trying to get into it. And uh, then I was cruising along one of the uh, yard sale ads or meaning uh, second had ads, you know, it wasn't, it was like Facebook or um, some web browser for uh, or uh, eBay or something that someone that was selling a secondhand bow and this uh, brand came across, it was elite and I've never heard anything on, on them. And so I started doing a little bit of research and, talking to a coworker at work he never heard anything on him so he started doing a little bit of research and then uh he found he actually was the one that found this bow on ebay i i i found it on the, another bow on another site and i was going to re research elite i wasn't really looking for a bow because it was i just found it never heard of them and then this guy found this other bow and then i sat on it for a day or so and then I kicked it over to Eric like hey ask ask uh people you know about what they know about elite bows and and you know it kind of came by with good reviews and I all I could I can more or less find nothing good but good said about it and uh the price um seemed to be a pretty good price for what I got well and the the extra or not really the extras but um like your site your your stabilizer the um, accessories 
Yeah, the accessories on the boat. I mean, the, that that looked like they they were a little aftermarket too, right? Right. Yeah. So for the price, I mean, you got a pretty good deal. Right. Like I think um, I think I'm roughly 150, 160 dollars in accessories, which is it wasn't quite as high end or you know like it's that's what I would have bought. The, yeah. the price point I would have bought at. So, you know, so it was like four hundred dollars for it all, and that was shipped as well. You know, like I didn't pay for shipping. So that was kind of nice. Um, but anyways, and the bow, the bow hit everything I was looking for, this elite tempo bow. And everybody, you know, was saying it's a quiet shooting bow. It's a joy to shoot. So I was like, well, I feel like I really can't go wrong where I, I don't know that I've, there was a couple of, I can't remember anything bad. I really came across it. So it was one of those deals. I was like, I, might as well go for it <laughs> yeah well uh, th that's exciting man i mean uh i know after you got that one i was you know from what i've seen of it and everything i'm like man i should have bought something off of ebay i could have got a better bow i do got to go back to something you said earlier though because you said uh you know earlier whenever uh you said like oh you know i had these older bows and i didn't want to drop a bunch of money on a new bow and then end up not liking archery. The funny thing about that, I feel like is most people that pick up, or at least everybody that I know that have picked up archery and, and is doing it, including myself. Um, I told myself the same thing. I was like, well, you know, I'll just buy a cheaper bow. And then, you know, if it doesn't work out for me, it, it is what it is, but it, you know, I'm hooked though. I'm so hooked on archery. I mean, you know, it's ridiculous. I'm so hooked on archery and it's like, well, yeah, I could spend all the money on a bow, you know, <laughs> I mean, yeah. it would have been worth it. I would have stuck with it, you know, but I, you just don't know, but uh, I don't know. It's, it's one of those, it's, I think this stuff just grabs you and it's hard to, it's hard well, to not do it. For me, it's been more like, the longer seasons that's like hooked me to it you know like it's just nice not to i mean you feel the pressure it's a different hunt for sure a little more personable of a hunt in the woods personal person personable you know you're up up close and personal <laughs> anyways so it's a, it's different so there's different pressure there mm -hmm. but you still get like you know a whole month or two to to hunt versus with the rifle it's like nine days yeah well and that's what i really love about the archery hunt too is that and the the fact that they're bugling during the during yeah. that time and and you're not freezing your butt off and you're not freezing your butt off there is there is something to be said about that i don't want to tell everybody that though because then they'll all start that's getting true. Bows. i will tell you like so for as popular as archery is getting i know a lot of the places that i hunted um I mean, there's a handful of guys, but comparing to the rifle season, archery is not uh, overcrowded as as bad as rifle, in my opinion. True. Um, you know, whenever I went on my deer hunt, Joe was with me on my deer hunt, and that was during the rifle season. It was crazy. I mean – well, yeah, I would say all day we were running into hunters all day. It was just that one area where we had that little bit of activity where I ended up getting my deer at was where I didn't really see as many people over in that area for whatever reason. But everywhere else, there was always people around there, it seemed like. Yeah. So it was just really interesting, uh, the comparison between the rifle season and the archery season. I. I feel like the archery season, even though I know so many archers, uh, it wasn't quite as overcrowded as is what, in my opinion, rifle season rifle seasons are. Yeah. So. Yeah, but yeah. So, I guess I'm a little more committed. I'm excited. I, you know, the bow. I'm excited about the bow. It it is it is what I wanted, you know, and it seems to have the good reviews. So, I. I'm glad I got it. <laughs> it looks like a really sharp bow too. Like when you look at it, it, 
it looks nice. It looks, yeah. I mean, it just looks like a really nice bow. The the cams, the, I like that. Um, I like that paint. Uh, what is that? That powder coat on the cams, whatever yeah. that color is. It looks pretty sharp. That was that was like one of the first things that I saw is just the way the the color scheme with it and everything. It it True. just looks like a sharp bow. Yeah, I think it. Yeah, I I, I agree with you. <laughs> cool uh but that kind of covers it kind of the, the quick and short of it i was I, gonna plan on april buying one that was my i was i knew i was gonna come across you know the deals like ah, i should have bought that one but like i said i started paid 400 for it i'll go put it out there started adding up the accessories and didn't have to pay for shipping and the guy I bought it from had good reviews on, on the eBay. So, and then found out the eBay had a return, you know, money back guarantee if you didn't like it. And so I was like, well, it seems like it's, it's all lining up for me. So. Yep. Well, good. I'm glad that it worked out. and It's exciting that you got it. And, and honestly, you, instead of waiting until April, um, I'm glad that you got it now because you can get your practice in with it now get right. it all tuned up for you for the way you like it and uh we, me and you we gotta try to get together a little bit more and learn as much about tuning tuning them up yes as we can so we can just do it ourselves because when you get really into it i just feel like it's too expensive to take it to a bow guy and have him do it right do you want to Tell everybody how you made your own bow press, though. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Was it kind of sketchy? A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just say some rope and a ratchet strap was involved. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, I don't even know what to say to that. <laughs> But I'm here. Nothing got broke. You're still alive. <laughs> still alive. No wounds. So that's it good. Probably won't happen again. <laughs> but <laughs> but it did happen. <laughs> I I, I should have asked you because you kind of brought it up before the podcast started. I should have asked you before the podcast. But but uh, yeah. Now now that I know, <laughs> I kind of wish I wouldn't have asked. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i i might be able to do a little bit of bow maintenance out in the woods if i ever need a bow press <laughs> yeah hey yeah at least you know what what to do now if it ever comes up yeah yeah that, there you go that's a good <laughs> that's crazy i should have took pictures yeah you should have you should have <laughs> oh shoot but yeah was, so did I cut you off? Oh, no, I was just going to – we're probably going to about say the same thing probably, but I was just going to say is there much anything else we got to want to get off our chest? No. No, I think unless – I mean, I got other topics that we can go over, but I think we probably bored everybody maybe enough for tonight. Yeah, right. Well, so – the well, that works for me. I guess uh, just say a few things. So this one will come out. Uh, the day after Christmas, give well, yeah, it should be about the day after Christmas. Uh, so I hope everybody had a good Christmas. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, Merry Christmas to everybody. And I guess maybe the next one we'll maybe talk about, um, oh, did you want to talk about, uh, or do you want to stay? Let's save it for next, next, yeah, let's save that, it for next, next week. Cause okay. next week will be more of like a, a year end review of everything yeah. or, yeah, it's you great. know, so, all right. Sorry. Sorry guys for the, we're trying to figure out next week's podcast, but anyway, um, thank you guys or, well, I hate doing this, but Joe, is there anything left that you have to say or. No, I just want to just echo uh, what you were saying. Merry Christmas to everybody. Hopefully you, you got time off from work. If you had to work, um, you know, you're doing it, keep up the good work and, uh, and thanks for listening. Yeah, definitely. Uh, second, everything Joe just said, 
Uh, thanks for listening, guys. It's been a fun year. Uh, we've had a lot of fun this year, had a lot of good activity uh, throughout the year. And I appreciate all you guys showing support and really just, uh, you know, keep it up. Share the podcast if you get a chance. If there's somebody out there that you think would like this stuff, share with them. Help us grow. Help us become a community. With that said, guys, uh, the Struggling Hunters, we're out. Bye.